And welcome back to another episode of Four Chicks Chatting. I'm here with Robin, Kristen, and Mary Fran. And we're talking all things spring cleaning. Um, this is one of those things that's, that's it's, it's near but not necessarily dear to my heart because spring cleaning for me, to be honest, is trading my sweatpants for sweat shorts. <laughs> and... I wear the same outfit (laughs) Yep, from October through May. And then from May to October comes out the other outfit. And so, (laughs) you know, I always resist when I, when there's all these trends and you have to do this and you have to do that. But this Mari Kondo chick has um, taken it to a whole (laughs) new level. So um, if you're familiar with her, she is, uh, she's a decluttering uh, ninja, I'm going to call her. Um, (laughs) She wants you to discard everything that does not spark joy after thanking the objects that are getting the heave-ho for their service. Your home already has all the storage you need. So um, I want to hear really from you guys and and hopefully from our listeners in, in the comments, what do you think of or what are your strategies or your processes for spring cleaning? Huh. Well, you know what? Right I, I forget. Uh, yeah, what down the counter? <laughs> Some somewhere I heard recently is when you can't get started and it's something you don't want to do. Think about the end result. That's the only thing that helps me with spring cleaning because I love after the fact when things mm. are decluttered and cleared up and there's space. It's the getting started and getting into it that that makes me nuts. Yeah, I, I'm actually sitting here looking around at my desk right now, which is a complete and utter disaster. And that, I think, for me, maybe even more so than my house, although the value, I, I did read her book and I did adopt her way of folding clothes and putting things in drawers and all. And it, it she says the life-changing magic of tidying up is the, is the title of the book. And I'm not kidding you, it is life-changing because the weight that comes off of your shoulders when you can you can see your things and anything that you're not using gets jettisoned. <laughs> it, it really is transformative. But I think for me, one of the things that I have to do is apply those principles to my my business life, my business space, my work area, because there is just so much going on and it's reflected in this mess that I'm looking at around me. And that's translating into a mess into my head. Mm-hmm. And I feel mm-hmm. like if you, for me, at least when I did her thing, when I cleared out my physical space, my mental space got better. Yeah, I totally, really I totally agree with you. I can't even come down and have a, a, I won't even put the kettle on until everything is put back in its place. And then I feel like I can, if I declutter the physical space, like you said, I declutter my mind. I think from a business perspective, I agree with you in that we, everybody hits the ground running in, in January, right? It's the first quarter. It's the first quarter. It's the new year. I'm going to do all these things. I'm going to implement all these ideas and it's go, go, go. And then it's February and then it's March. And then you're, you're kind of in this constant, um, I don't, I don't want to use the word clutter, but it's just this constant state of flux. And then all of a sudden the sun's coming back out, the weather's getting warmer, and you find yourself caught in all this January, February, and March stuff that you felt like you needed to do. So maybe you didn't need to do all of those things. Maybe now's a great time to say, you know what? Yeah, I started 10 things because in the beginning of the year, this is what I wanted to accomplish. Maybe I need to declutter some of these ideas and, and some of these projects and Maybe just now going into the second quarter, focus on one or two of them and do them well. I don't know. Just a thought. I think that's huge. I I really think that's huge because you've hit on, you've hit on something, you know, we we start the new year with new projects and new ideas and and we have that, that energy for that. But we also have to recognize that reevaluating as you go through and being willing to, you know, when you're, when you're a writer, they tell you, you have to be willing to, I think it's kill your darlings, which means like you, you have this tremendous, you know, sentence or phrase or whatever. And for some reason, it's just not working. You have to be willing to edit it out and get rid of it so that the other things work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's huge because, you know, we all try things you, you try a million things, but not everything's going to be a fit for you, 
or your business or your life, you have to be willing to prune it back. You know, prune the hedges, prune the, the stuff outside, prune it back and get rid of it. You know, one of the things that I, I think I mentioned it back in January with one of the, you know, starting the new year and whatever things was that I started with, um, uh, I'm looking at it here. Is it Michael Hyatt's planner? Yes, uh, you referenced focus. that before, yeah. Planner, so that actually, I didn't realize how that was going to declutter my desk, my mind, and all of my bags, because I was using, I don't even think I have them anymore, all these little notebook things, that's like a big thing, Mary Fern, are you getting those in like speaker bags and thank you things at conferences, all these little notebook things? Another one. Yeah. Just so got it the I, other day. <laughs> I'm like, all right, if I write everything down, all of my ideas down, I have a post-it note wall where I was writing things down. I was organizing like my brain and all. And then, but I couldn't take my wall with me when I was mm -hmm. out. And then I'd have to remember to stick it on the wall. And this one planner, now I am going to try Brendan Bouchard's. I just ordered his too, to see if it's any different, but it's got my to-do list. It has the calendar. It doesn't have the monthly calendar in it, which is driving me crazy. But, and then it has notes. So I am religious now when I take notes on a phone call, if I, my travel plans for all of my speaking stuff, it's all in this one thing. <laughs> it kind of looks like hell. There's yeah. not a good system in there. God but forbid you leave it in over. the back of an Uber. Oh well, my that's gosh. the other thing I'm a little nervous about. So I do make sure I back up at least all that important, some of the important things with my phone, but I take it with me everywhere to have one thing and put it all in that. My one little declutter. The rest of my house looks like hell. <laughs> <laughs> I got my damn book. <laughs> I think it's really important to pare down to, to the essential. I mean, I just end up losing stuff. And I have, I mean, I have come to rely on my, my phone a lot and putting everything in the cloud because I am, I mean, I'm just looking at this. I have one, two, three, four, five, five notebooks on my desk right now, five of them. And all of them have some purpose or another, you know, one I transcribe show notes and stuff like that into and, and blah, blah, blah. But it, it's ridiculous. Like you, you just really, and then, like I said, the space in my head is just a jumble of all of that. So you just need a college ruled five subject notebook. <laughs> Says the organizer. <laughs> and I should be listening to you. I should be listening. But see, then my problem is that I have more than five areas. Like I have more, the, and that's the thing, because it goes back to, Kath, what you were just saying about, well, maybe I'll try this and maybe I'll try that. And so, and then I'm taking notes on all those 50 different things that I mm -hmm. want to investigate and it just goes beyond. So I, I just got to figure out how to prune it all down in terms of work. Maybe you finish one thing before you just I never that finish. idea down. I never finish, finish one thing before you start another. I, I never finish anything. <laughs> oh, well. Everything is a perpetual work in progress. That's my problem. Maybe you need to go back and see Dolores Hirschman again. I need deep therapy. <laughs> a little clarity. I would do. Help I know. I do. I need to go talk to Dolores, who is it coming is, up in yeah. a future episode. <laughs> yeah, it's cool coming off of recording that episode because the way that she talked about, and our listeners will be able to hear that when she talked about the exact opposite of what everybody's saying. You don't have to have the website, every social media platform, every, just pick a, a thing you're good at and do it. And everything else falls into place. It's amazing. That was like, talk about spring cleaning. That was huge to hear her yeah. say that. Do you know, one of the things I did, um, since I'm going to be launching my new program, I went through my email list and reorganized my email list. And you talk about decluttering. Holy Hannah, I had so many duplicate emails. I had so many yeah. emails with no names attached to them. Like I, I got rid of so much space on my computer just in email addresses alone. And well, you save money have, too in databases. Exactly. Yeah. And I now have 190 new email addresses to add to my email list that weren't on there. So I just jumped from, you know, 600 to almost 800 people on my mailing list. That's huge. With getting rid of a bunch of stuff. And yeah, with, with get, like identifying, so, yeah. Right. So I mean, it's, stuff. you know, it's little things like that. There's a woman that I'm, I'm friends with on Instagram. She's, um, actually I'm going to do her branding for her, um, short in the near future. Once it warms up and everything, she lives in Maryland, her name on, on social media, she is social savvy. I think, let me look in. I'll make yeah, her social, name. social her savvy VA. Yeah, social savvy VA. So she's a virtual assistant basically. But the things she puts out on these trainings are amazing. Like to declutter 
files, you know, and exactly how we were talking about earlier where your workspace is decluttered so that you can focus um, doing your email list, she suggested. She's got a gazillion tips, but they're all related to, to business. And it's also, she also suggests, which is to me huge. And if you ever read the book, E-Myth Revisited, mm -hmm. it's, um, Kathy, you read that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But creating your workflows mm -hmm. so that you have, you have a workflow to pro process that to follow and then you stay focused and you can go from point a to point b effectively so there's i think there's a lot of ways you can declutter your business brain mm -hmm. so where do you start i mean do you pick a, a thing like your email list or where do you start with that because i know like i said i'm uh, it's overwhelming now i know kristen you kind of decided to put everything in one one place, Robin, how did you decide to just start on your email list? Or was that just one thing that you read of that suggestive, suggesting? No, I had already, actually, before she did her post about the email address, I had already started because I knew there was, I knew there was, um, oh gosh, what's the right term? Potential, I guess, in my, in all of my contacts. I knew I had not, when I was getting new clients, I knew that I wasn't putting them on my email address or I wasn't sending them, you know, the, right. The, the, the lead magnet to, to opt in for my email. So I, I went through it to see who am I missing? And because, mm -hmm. you know, when I've worked with all these people for personal branding or for headshots, a lot of them are entrepreneurs and have their own business. So they're people that my program, you know, building a, a brand that sells through trust is going to be applicable to them. It may be something that they're interested in. So that was my motivation to go through my email list. Mm -hmm. And so I guess, you know, what I would say, Mary Fran is, you know, what are, what are you working on and where are your priorities? Cause once you set your priorities, then you can right. decide what area do you need to declutter first? I mean, you know, right now it's tax season and that's, this is where I am awful. I'm usually so organized, but I'm so busy in my business that all of my invoices, my contracts, my, you know, receipts and all that stuff, I stockpile them until my sales taxes are due. And then I have to sit down for hours and do it. It would be so much easier if I just did it, you know, for a half an hour at the end of every week or an hour at the end of the month. Instead, I, I like literally have a pile and mm -hmm. like, I'm so bad about that. But that's like one of the things that Social Savvy VA talks about as well. She's like, you, you can't do that and have all of your bookkeeping organized and timely and, you know, let, I mean, let's face it, that's a lot of tax deductions. If I, if I misplace that or I don't record it, you know what I mean? So yeah. like, that's my next project is to get better and put that on my calendar and make sure that every month I do that. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, um, yeah, like I said, I, I guess maybe the, the, Maybe the way in terms of prioritizing, in terms of what projects you're working on, and in terms of what's going to bring money in the door, and and that's a, that's a good way to to look at maybe how you figure out where to start. So yes, we're all involved in projects that we have to do every day, maybe to keep up our business, to move forward, blah blah blah. But then I think we also have to. It's sometimes it's easy to get lost in those places, and maybe you need to figure out what your priorities are in terms of what's bringing money in the door too. So maybe you, maybe you streamline, streamline your systems mm -hmm. as best you can, and then really take a look at where the money's coming in and the stuff that's maybe just bringing in a little and isn't fulfilling, then maybe you get rid of that. Yeah. That's a hard thing to do. That's a hard thing to, to let go of something that you kind of see potential in maybe, but it's not working. I don't know. Is that, what do you think, Kath? How do you do this? I, well, you're saying, I keep hearing her saying, does it spark joy? Does it spark yeah. joy? <laughs> um, I, it's funny because yeah, I get, I get very attached. It's an inanimate object, but I get attached to projects because uh -huh. I put a lot of effort into uh -huh. it. And so I don't want to let things go, but there's some point where I just have to say, you know what? It's just not working. I know you want it to work. I know you're going to do whatever you can and you're going to run yourself ragged, but it's just not working. So step away from it. And then if it's, if it's still there, if it's, if, if you're still thinking about it, go back to it, see it with a clear set of eyes and, and it, attack it again. But there's just some things you just have to say, it's just not working. It sounded great in January and February. 
but now I, I have to move on to something else. So it's, it, it's not sparking joy, but it's not sparking revenue either. Hey, that's great. I like that. Sparking revenue. Sparking Mm -hmm. revenue. That's the question. That's like the title of the episode. Sometimes I think though, like for me, when I decided to really hone in on my, my niche and focus only on headshots and personal branding and create my program, I'm actually giving up a huge source of revenue in terms of family portraits. But that wasn't, although it did spark some joy, it's not where my passion is and it's not where I want to be. So sometimes I think you almost have to do the opposite. You have to, you know, depending on what your goals are and where you want to go and what fuels you, you, you do have to move away from the things that do spark revenue and focus on the things that spark joy. So it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I, I, I do think that, and maybe the key to all of it is, where are you feeling your energy naturally leading you? Like maybe, maybe part of that is, is spring cleaning the spring cleaning where you put your energy because we're so scattered and we're putting our energy in so many places that maybe it is a a matter of saying, okay, this has been bringing me money, but I'm just, I'm just not feeling this anymore. And maybe I need to make a shift, but it has to be thoughtful. I mean, Robin, you've put a lot of time and energy into researching and instituting systems and instituting, you know, creating your course and all that. So you've, you've done the work to make that an acceptable choice. You can't just cut off a revenue stream without having something else to go into. 100%. that, yeah. 100%. And that's why I started that statement with when I decided to hone in on my niche and my passion yeah. versus trying to do everything for everyone. Because right. you ultimately, when you're trying to do everything for everyone, you, you can't have joy because you're exhausted and you're overwhelmed and whatever. So I, I saw this quote by Ellen DeGeneres when we, um, on spring cleaning. And I love this because I think it actually applies to both um, personal, like home life, as well as business life based on what Kathy just said. But if you want to get rid of stuff, you can always do a good spring cleaning or you can do what I do, move. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. <laughs> but I think, think about that. When you move into a new home or out of an old home, you get rid of so much stuff. I mean, there's always moving sale signs somewhere, you know, and it's like, it's so true. You get rid of so much stuff. So it's like Kath said, if, if this project needs to be spring cleaned, maybe it's not the one that you should be working on right now. Move away from it and start something else that you know is going to be beneficial to you and whoever you're serving. And then maybe come back to it when that is something you're passionate about again. I don't, I don't know. Just like I told that. my kids I, I want to move because I just want to go to some house that's empty and somebody cleaned for days <laughs> just sell it. and then start all over again and bring our not much crap into it. Yeah. yeah Actually, the, well, the whole thing on the spring cleaning too, maybe you can hold on to a lot of your stuff. If I save a ridiculous amount of time when I'm organized and I know where things are, it's the, it's the time suck of being really disorganized is. and having yeah. stuff all over the place that kills me or working for an hour and a half on a stupid JPEG on Canva because yeah. I need to get it right. Those kinds of things. So, so, um, being that's, able- that's when you hire somebody to do that. You can hire somebody for like $20 a month to do those graphics for you. Like you don't have the time for that. So you have to evaluate your time. And the other thing I was thinking of, Kath, you know how you, you always are like, where's the link? Cause I send them out and like, sometimes I'll send them with the Google, the calendar alert. Uh, yeah. So, and I'm I know this drives very brand now. crazy, uh-huh. but that's a huge thing. Like if I know, like I have a four chicks file, so I know I can go to that four chicks file and immediately I'm going to be able to find whatever email or whatever link or whatever I need for the four of us. The same thing with, you know, my personal branding business versus the headshot business. Like there's a file there. Then there's the files for the kids' school stuff there, you know, for band, for sports, for chorus, whatever it is. So that it's all there and organized. I don't have to waste time to go and find that. I know exactly where to look for it. So Maybe I think you need the your own is, Netflix special, Robin. Yes, that Robin needs to, Robin needs to spring clean all of our homes and all of our no, businesses. No, I don't want to clean homes. <laughs> no, not no, all I the think. answers. I businesses. It wasn't businesses. a question. Just come no. over here and do it. Here's a question. You'd kick me out because I'd be too bossy. Here's a question and an <laughs> intervention <laughs> okay. and a and a practical tip that I need. 
What do you all do with um, the eight gajillion business cards? I mean, I'm like the serial networker and I have all these business cards. Do you keep them? Do you take pictures of them? You're no, you know, here's what you do. You want my <laughs> idea? You take a picture of them with your phone. You create a file on your computer, business cards, and you alphabetize them. Oh my God. Or you download just the free app, like, like I did, called BizScan. Uh huh. And put tell it in me, there. Tell me more. Take the Biz picture. BizScan. BizScan. And it, autom it does, does it all do? of that for you. It's like oh, taking yeah? a picture of your check when you want to deposit it. You take no a picture way. of the business card, it puts it in a file, you can export it import it, whatever port you want to do with it. Writing this down. And here's I'm getting another, it right now. Here's another Don't idea. Don't write it down. Go on your phone right now and download it. And here's, the, here's another idea that's even easier is take that and while they're a warm lead, connect with them on LinkedIn or social media or send them an email. And then you, yeah. you already have them as- a I do that too, especially on LinkedIn. It's just then they end up in with my 3,000 people and I have to remember who, what, and where. But will BizScan categorize them too, Kath? Uh, that's advanced. I'm sorry. Please hold. <laughs> uh, let me- Please hold. <laughs> Please Call hold. Please okay. hold. <laughs> Connect you with someone that can answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was just when you were just talking That's Kristen great. about emails I think this is another way to and this sounds kind of maybe counterintuitive to what we're saying but because we're talking about getting rid of things and now I'm going to talk about creating something but I think if we create certain if we can create certain email templates for things like exactly what you said reaching out to a new warm contact hey you know we met at a fill in the blank, you know, whatever it is, if we can create certain templates that we use over and over and over again in our business for those kinds of things that we do all the time, we go out, we meet people, we get business cards, we make, make new contacts. If you can create a few of those and just have them somewhere so that when you're doing that particular thing, that will streamline a process for you. So Look that you're you. and streamlining you. processes is a part of that spring cleaning idea, right? Mary Fran, make exactly. me a template. I'll be your best friend. And <laughs> If you, if you I, I don't want you for my best friend. I have templates. For <laughs> I you. know I yeah. already I already mentioned the book E Myth Revisited, but that's one of the key components of that because whenever you're successful and you hire someone to do all these things for you, the templates and the workflows and the processes are all there, so they just can jump in and do it, and yeah. you no longer have to be in the trenches. Yeah, I think you, you well, you have to prioritize where you're going to spend the money too. What drives you the most nuts, and what can you just not handle? What sparks yeah. the most revenue? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it takes the least amount of time. Long. Because having time those small money. systems in place, those little things that every, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but every time I think, like I look at these business cards and I'm like, oh God, I got to touch base with all those people. But if I've collected 20 business cards, it's just one of those things where I'm like, I don't, I don't have time for this right now. But if you have a, a template or you have something that you can just plug in, and just kind of do whether, I don't know, maybe you could even do something like that. I don't know if you should, you shouldn't do it through MailChimp, not, not anything. You know what on. you can do on, um, in your email contacts too. Like if you're going to send them an email, you're putting their email address, then in the notes section, you can put where you met them. And then all yeah. you have to do and your go to your contacts and search wherever you met them. And that's going to come up right. to that person. So that's a, that's a great thing for, um, you know, to do it electronically as well. Um, maybe you can do that on the business card app that you said, Kathy, but there's, um, there's also, I don't know if you know this, but there are organizations, there are entrepreneurs out there who do just this. They are like networking assistants and Ashley Owens owns yeah. um, Ashley yeah. assist. And this is what she does. Ah, people, she goes her. to networking events and people will get all these business cards. And while they are still warm leads, she contacts them and reaches out for them for these entrepreneurs so that they have that warm connection that stays hot versus going cold and, and losing the interest, hmm. which I thought was brilliant. That's smart. It is brilliant. It is br because how often do you, like I said, I just showed you guys, anybody who's watching on YouTube, look at all these, they're sitting on my desk. Cause I have Take a card, any card. I have to get through them. I have to get through them. And it's just, it's one of those like business things that you have to do to, to keep contact with people that it's just a time suck. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, t it's a huge time suck. And yet that's exactly how you generate revenue down the road. Like Kristen, you and I were saying earlier, because I'm looking to, you know, I'm doing these speaking programs for places. That's, that's where the next one's going to come from. 
Yeah. But it's just a matter of, you know, okay, reaching out to them and, and, but finding a system, creating some kind of a system to do that. And that, like I said, it sounds counterintuitive to spring cleaning, but in some ways creating a system to help you get rid of the other clutter, maybe that's the answer in some ways. You know what I do too, Mary Fran, on, along those lines of when Tell we're me, speaking at stuff and attending conferences, I'll go, especially on the ones that are further away, I'll spend the flight or the train ride looking at who's speaking and who I want to meet, and I connect with them on LinkedIn on the way there. Yeah. I did and that. I can't see how many times people say, oh my God, I just got a connection from you on LinkedIn. And then they remember, and then <laughs> it helps me remember. And then even if I don't get a business card, are you finding that not a ton of people, well, no. There are some people that don't do business cards anymore. They just want to give you their either cell phone or LinkedIn. Yeah, not as much. I definitely haven't. In all That's the not a trend, is it? I don't know. I still get, as Could you be. saw, a ton of business cards. But I all make right, a practice of that too. And I, in fact, it's funny that you, you mentioned that, Kristen. Um, I just did a conference last week. And right before that, I connected with all the speakers on LinkedIn. And, and almost every one of them came up to me and sought me out and, you know, introduced themselves. So, yeah, cool. I, you know, I mean, it has really nothing to do with spring cleaning, but it is a way of maybe it a good idea. Of, it's targeting, you are targeting and you're strategically targeting the people that you want to, to meet and know and, you know, and connect mm -hmm. with. So maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of time sucks. We're very mindful of our audience attention span. So let's <laughs> wrap it up. Is it them or us? <laughs> it's Adam. <laughs> I'm done, guys. This, this is all shut down now. Does anybody have any final little tidbits, little nuggets on spring cleaning professionally or personally? I saw a couple, many, many years ago now, I think the woman was on Oprah. Here's something to consider. If you, whether, if, whether you think maybe you don't need to spring clean in your house or your business, whatever. And the woman said, you need to, if you are living in chaos, and she did it as, you know, you're in chaos if you can't have anyone over soon. <laughs> oh, I love that. If you can't get it together in 15 minutes because somebody says they're on their way over, you're living in chaos. <laughs> You I, love, fix that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely going to put that in the show notes. Mary Fran, Robin? Um, I, I would say just that, reiterating what I said before, I find that when my physical space is clear, my mental space gets clear. Yep. So if that means, you know, just taking, taking sometimes it's just taking stuff and, and trashing it or putting it in a drawer where it's out of sight or whatever. But, but my <laughs> physical space needs to be clear for my mental space. To be clear. And I would say, you know, if you're a person in business, I'm more talking about that than I am my home. But, um, you know, it, if you are at a place where you can hire someone, even for just a couple of hours a week, hiring someone to do those tasks that you don't like to do actually generates more time for you to do what you want to and what creates revenue. So evaluate what money you could be bringing in while you're doing these mundane tasks that someone else could do, could do for a lot less money when you weigh, you know, how much you could be making instead of doing those tasks. I've found that that has been a huge help for me. Spend money to make money. Well, and I'm just going to say, uh, move things to less obvious places. <laughs> that's what cabinets are for. It won't seem so cluttered. So that's it for us. Um, Thanks. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us. Follow us on uh, that social thing, fourchickschatting.com. Please leave us a comment. I think there, there are going to be a lot of comments um, on this one regarding spring cleaning and, and if you, uh, what you do professionally and personally to declutter your mind. We'd love to hear it. So thanks again. Bye, everybody. Bye.